Hey, it's Angela at Lala Gallery and Studio, and today I'm doing a little bit of mono printing. So here's a bowl that has come out of the kiln already. This is going to be a red clay body, and here in just a second I'm going to paint a white casting slip on the top. And I just like that as it gives a little halftone effect. So I'll walk you through some of the steps today. This slip is not necessary. It's just a aesthetic thing for me. I find that this, you know, it's a white porcelain casting slip, so it gives a nice bright white effect. And when you put clear glaze over it, it looks a little creamy when it comes out of the glaze firing. So I just use this every once in a while to give my red clay body some contrast. And it really doesn't matter at this point how heavy it's on here, um, because I'm gonna print right over the top of that. So for the mono printing process, all the bowls have been painted with a white slip. And now to get this color on the surface, I'm gonna walk you through that. Some basic materials that you'll need, just paint brushes. You could use sponges if you want to. So whatever utensil you wanna to use to transfer color onto some paper. Today I'm gonna to use some copy paper. This works great if you're an, you know, an elementary, middle school, high school teacher. It's nice to where the children can just focus on what they're drawing. Newspaper, newsprint, uh, you can get newspaper pretty cheap at a packing supply store, uh, but for today we're gonna use copy paper. And then an assortment of colors that you might want to use. So these are our house made slips. You can use underglaze, you can use stains, whatever has a ceramic pigment that you could transfer onto the paper and then transfer in mono prints onto your clay. So I went ahead and just put a piece of newspaper on my turntable to keep it clean. And then I've got my paper here. The thing to think about is whatever you want to be on top or be on the surface of your pot, that's the detail that you put down first. So I'm gonna take my smallest paintbrush, my little moose hair paintbrush, and you don't need a lot of pigment. You just pick up a little bit of pigment. It's almost like a watercolor technique. Pick up a little bit of pigment, maybe scrape any excess liquid off in your container. And then I'm just gonna do some basic shapes. So I'm gonna start with line. So this is a great lesson for elements and principles of design, printmaking onto the clay surface. So I just did a series of stripes. This could be as complex or simple as you'd like it to be. What's really nice about this, when you're doing your lesson plans, you can have your students for 30 minutes or if you're teaching a major class, they could spend a whole class session drawing with pencil, going in and going over all their pencil with a darker color, like a deep violet or a black or a brown, and then come back and fill in and step back and step back and fill in their whole paper. And you can save that for the next time that you see them and print it, no problem. So there's some black lines. I'm gonna switch, get a different piece uh, paintbrush I'm going to pick up a little bit of this hunter green and I'm just going to go every other one about and you can put your colors right on top of that. So the way this works when we push this onto the clay and we peel it off it's like a temporary tattoo or if you've ever seen that pancake drawing where they do their lines first and then fill in the background with a different color of pancake batter. So we're stepping back so I want that hunter green to go down and I'm going to take a little bit bigger paintbrush and I want to have some blue on here. And I'm going to try to fill in most of that with the blue and leave just a couple areas plain. Whatever I leave plain will be white. But if you wanted your background to be a different color, you could just let this dry completely. And then I could hit this whole thing with violet. And when I print it, it'll be a violet black background with hunter lines with some blue intermixed with that and black right on top. So I'm gonna let this dry for just a second and we can do some more shapes. So you can stockpile these, you know, do some pattern, especially if you're working in a series and then print them when you're ready. Sometimes you need to activate them with a little bit of spray to then transfer them directly onto the clay. But I'm gonna be using a casting slip today, which is nice, it, it helps the underglaze or the slit for the stain just released from the paper. So now I have some circles. Go in with a smaller paintbrush and I'm going to do some 
turquoise stripes inside of them. Like so. And I want some of those. Now let's do all of those. We'll have all of those get filled in with chartreuse. That's where I was talking about with your background. You just go in, fill your background. I find that younger students use way too much material. So it may be nice to break this up into two days. That way it's not really globby when it's their time to use it. So I'm gonna set that to the side. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the first one I did. It's a little bit drier now. And I'm gonna take my casting slip and just put slip all over the top of that. You could spray this, you can spray your pot and then lay your paper down. You don't have to have this slip to be a transfer. I just like it because it leaves a little bit of a texture and it's really expensive, inexpensive. You can get this slip at a local craft store, ceramic supply store, no problem. So I took that same slip and I just covered the whole thing. So any of those blank areas are gonna be white and then I'm gonna set this on the bowl. I pre-cut these to be about the size that I want. So we have some stripes going on over here. Just give it a gentle rub. Try not to warp your pot too much. And these are at like a wet leather hard consistency. You could do this on a leather hard tile. Um, that works too. All right, so I'm gonna take this one that has the circles on it. So we'll have a stripe pattern on one part and we'll have a circle pattern on the other. So this print material, this casting slip, it does leave a little bit of a texture, like a raised area, because it's a little bit thicker of a slip. So what I'm doing with this one is I took this casting slip and I only went over the circles. So when I print that, there's gonna be a slight texture where all of those circles are which will be really fun. All right, we're gonna start over here. Look at that, it's like the perfect shape. Not too short, not too long. I'm just going where those circles are. I'm supporting the inside with my thumb and smoothing on the outside. Now, I could take this off right away if I wanted to and it would give a slightly broken look. Um, not all the color would print. The longer you let this sit, the more material will transfer and your design will be more crisp. But I'm okay with making these a little bit loose. So I'm gonna rub them one more time. Let me get the material to stick. All right, here we go. There we go, so that's mono printing. It's super duper easy, really quick, easy way to get color on your projects. You know, say there's a snow delay and it's really a total bummer that the students couldn't come back and glaze this. This is something that you could put a clear glaze on and it doesn't really mess up the integrity of their work. Um, I do a lot of under glaze mono printing projects with my students and if their classes get canceled or whatever due to things out of my control, you know, it's really, they're nice the way they are. Now, when this is a little bit drier, you could go in and add some stamping. Those vertical lines, um, I went back in and stamped. So then you could add stains and bring those out or take a glossy glaze and inlay in those areas and then put a clear glaze on top or some sort of translucent glaze. Really, the sky's the limit as far as building up surface and pots. So really hope that you experiment and do some fun things with mono printing. It's one of my favorite things to do. And you know, those very simple shapes made kind of an interesting design, I think. So let me know what you think.